What's up, dude? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Sorry about that. I'm, am, no. am I sweating? I no. literally just had to run and get a new cord. And I was like, <laughs> by the way, we're in to paint a picture. I'm in my closet right now, which I've turned into a studio, obviously. No way. Yeah. And so it's a pretty tiny closet. So I, I have a chair. There's not a lot of, what's that? There's not a lot of room for ventilation in there, huh? Correct. So I've got a fan going, but I'm also standing on my son's desk chair, which has no way. a dinosaur pillow that I'm sitting on to kind of raise me Dude, up. Dude, that's so rock and roll. I'm plugging in cords and I'm like, so anyway, I apologize for the late. Dude, mistake. you don't have to worry about that. It's all good. Uh, it's good to talk to you, man. Uh, Sunday Drive is such a phenomenal album. I, I was a really big fan of Gabrielle, and I'm a really big fan of uh, Good Day. And in fact, I want to start there. I want to play a clip of that song. Okay. I don't know what it feels like what's coming by. Dude, so first off, it automatically makes you smile. Like right from the get, you've got this big smile on your face and it's such a feel-good song. Can you walk me through this tune and of course, writing it, putting it together and, and what it means to you, obviously? Yeah, I was writing it. I was writing this song back before the pandemic. I was actually writing it um, a couple of years ago when I started kind of my own personal journey of self-isolation in some ways of, of disconnecting from the world and trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted in my life and who I wanted to be, what I wanted to say. And I uh, kind of neglected that for her because I was just always worried about what was next on the road. You know, you just, it's a crazy life. It can be. And, and uh, I wanted to slow it down. And so, uh, and, it, and with that brought uh, times of focusing on negativity instead of the positive things in life. And I, I thought I got so fed up with it. And I, 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 I walked into the, the studio that day right with my friend Dean and Daniel and uh and I was just kind of talking about all this and and uh you know we kind of came up with the concept of you know setting your intention in the morning when you wake up of uh you know instead of being like wow you know god I I I haven't I haven't got around to paying that bill that was you know five days ago or I haven't uh I was supposed to mow the yard and I never did or or this person's really mad at me and I haven't said or whatever that is, all these different things that are building up all this negativity. Look what I saw on the news. It just seems like we're going to be stuck in this forever. You know, all these different things that you could constantly find. Um, or I was like, I don't want to focus on that. I want to, I want to focus on the good things that are in my life. And, and instead of waking up and saying, Oh, this, all this, all this, all this negativity, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to have a good day today. You know, what's the big deal and, and putting my best fo foot forward and saying, you know, I'm going to have a good day today. I'm going to let all the stuff come at me there's going to be stuff that's not you know ideal coming towards me but it's life and i'm gonna have a good day i'm gonna put my best foot forward and and uh and that's that's the whole intention of this song and kind of how i like to start my days now and it and it helps i think a lot and i thought in a time like this this was an important message to get out there there's so much that i want to unpack here because uh i'm a i'm a power of positive thinking person myself and yeah, yeah. anybody that's watched the secret or read the book the secret they know all yeah. about that and, and hopefully they they practice that so i want to get to that in a second but i want to go to the isolation aspect of this because from what i what i read and what i heard you literally shut that you had a flip phone like you didn't even have it is that true you had like yeah a actual flip phone yeah, yeah, you got yeah. off of social media which you were a prominent figure on yeah, um, yeah. and just went to write. So I guess my first question is walk me through the best part of all of that. And, and, and probably the worst part too, because I imagine it had to have some form of like, you know, we get addicted to these things. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you reach for it as like this, almost like a pacifier, right? Tell me yeah, about yeah. the good and the bad of, of all of that. Um, I think for me, I had to, uh, I had to focus. I mean, these, these phones, I have one here. I mean, it's, it's, uh, but I, uh, I've changed my relationship with it since I did that. But I, when I was, you know, I was waking up every morning doing things like bedhead jams, or whatever. I'd sing to my phone at like yeah. 9 a.m. I didn't even, I didn't even take time for myself or anything. I just got up, my hair was all messed up. And I would sing, and it was cool. I, I had this huge following and all that stuff. And then, but but it was like that, and you start building up all these pressures. Well, if I, uh, everybody's expecting me to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, oh, I missed a day. Well, what about bedhead jams? You know what this? That's just a small example. There's a million. Yeah. You yeah. know, posting certain things that uh, that uh, get more likes than other things. All these different things that are just like, why do I care about any of this? I don't really care about any of this. I mean, I care about being there for my fans and putting out music stuff, but a lot of this doesn't have to do with the music of it. And you're looking at all the other things and comparing and all that. You know, all the things we know about social media. Well, 
I wanted to get away from that. I just needed to step back from that and change my relationship with all of it. So I got a flip phone, um, which was really, I didn't even know they still made them, but they do. Uh, I tried, I literally tried to find like my old uh, razor. Yes. Uh, I couldn't find it. Uh, but uh, I got a flip phone. The, the people were so like confused why I wanted to get one at the store. I don't think they didn't see anybody, a young guy like me trying to get one of those. But uh, I got one and then I, I just, I just focused on that. And I, you know, as soon as I got it, there was a little bit of a, a transition period of uh, like the, the biggest, I'd say the worst part about it was not having maps. Um, sure. The stuff that we're used to on that, like, I mean, back in the day, we used to print map quest, you know, uh, directions, uh, which, you know, I was finding it's myself. I'm, dangerous to think about, right? You're driving yeah. down the road and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was like the tough part, but really the, 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 the pros are way outweighed the cons. I mean, I, uh, you know, green bubble texting is tough. T nine, T nine word texting is pretty tough, <laughs> but like this, the, the amount of distraction you do with these phones is incredible. I mean, it's, I mean, you can look how many times you check your phone a day. It's insane. And, and, uh, and it, you know, I realized how often I was on it by this amount of song ideas and emotions and things I was starting to feel because I wasn't constantly numbing it and, and just distracting from letting myself just be a person, you know? And, I, I, and, uh, and so I, uh, I, I learned so much from it and honestly, I'm ready, I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to go back to one, I think at some point. But what I did was when I got out of it, so I had a really amazing experience. I wrote a lot of amazing music without, without a smartphone. And uh, when I got back to a smartphone, I started putting limits on my apps. So, and then you can lock yourself out of those apps. Yeah. And that's what I did. So I have a, uh, a friend or one of my management or uh, would, would set a password on it. And so even if I want to hit ignore or whatever, I can't because it's locked out. Wow. And that way it's like, okay, if I'm on Instagram, I'm mindfully, uh, mindfully uh, going through Instagram. So I'm looking at, you know, the stuff that really matters to me more often and stuff like that. So that, that's, that's kind of the way it's changed for me through all that. And it was, it was powerful. So then the follow-up question to that has to be when you, when you do decide, okay, I'm going to get back on, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to start interacting with people again. What is the very first thing that you checked when you got on, <laughs> when you got on Instagram, you, what was the first thing you were like, all right, I gotta, I gotta go here and see what this person's doing or what hashtag, whatever it was, what was the first thing you had to that's see? A, but that's a wild to think about, you know, I think I was, I think I was curious if my fans still cared about anything. Cause I wasn't, uh, you know, I just hadn't had that connection. Sure. I was so used to having that connection. And, uh, and so I started, so I got back on and I posted something pretty quick of like, um, and what I was doing is I was doing Polaroids when I came back. Yeah. So what I would, even while I was on the flip phone, I would send Polaroids and then I would, I would be able to see it. Like if I went on somebody's computer or something, I could see what my fans were saying, but I wasn't staring at a phone. Um, so I could just be, it's not like I was walking down the street. I had a, I had an iPad, but I wasn't walking down the street with an iPad, like looking at what people were saying. Um, so, uh, just that kind of stuff. So I think my first thing was seeing how my fans were doing and, and shaking in and, and, uh, seeing if they still thought that I was alive and making music. So somebody commented, somebody commented on uh, um, a video that you posted, I believe it was on Instagram where you were, uh, I think you were lip syncing on a, you were on a boat, like on a fishing boat. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And someone was like, that sounds like Luke Bryan's laugh in the background. Can you reveal who, who it was? That was <laughs> That's amazing. That was my friend, John. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, but a lot, of, I guess it went pretty, a lot of people started asking, was that Luke Bryan with me? Which wouldn't be out of the ordinary because, uh, you know, he loves to fish and we yep. fished several times together. Um, but it was not Luke Bryan, it was our friend John. And uh, he's a really funny guy. And, and now he has Luke Bryan's laugh, whether he likes it or not. I don't think I even thought of that. But now I guess my fans do. He can make some money off of it. That's let's, right. Let's go back to the uh, power of positive thinking and all of that. So the thing that I run into with a lot of people when I tell them that 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 is something that I practice and I do it every single day, no matter the situation, no matter the negativity that's coming at me, I always turn that into a positive. And they they always say like, well, that doesn't that doesn't really work. Like in it's 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 pie in the sky, right? Like it's it's a great theory, but it doesn't actually work. So from your perspective, as someone who is doing that actively. Has it worked for you? And in, in what way would you say it's worked for you? Like an example of something. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's worked for me in a, in a huge way. And I think, I think I'm a realist too. So it's like, 
I know that there's things that aren't always going to be exactly what you imagine as being a positive thing for you. Um, but like the, some of the, the best examples for me are just some of the just down periods I've had in my life. And over the last, you know, 10 years of the rise and the, the ups and the downs and the everything is in betweens. It's like getting in these really deep and dark down places that you feel like you're never going to crawl out of. And then realizing that you do. And, 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 uh, and I think the positivity of being like, you know, once I, once I started finding resilience and I started to figure out that, yes, it's a lot better way to, to look at life by being an optimist and a pet, you know, than, than not, um, that's where the power came in. I'm not going to, I'm not saying every day is perfect. I have plenty of down days. I have plenty of rough days, but, but I know they're going to pass because they're passing emotions. They're just emotions. They're not, they're not, they're not a, a, a full blown state forever. You know, you can, you can really ride those waves and, and just be there for the, for the living. And so, uh, picking that positivity has been, has been huge for me. I love it, man. I want to talk. I want to go back, obviously, to Sunday Drive, the album. Um, I'd love to to hit on every single song, but obviously we don't have all the time for that. So I want to pick out a couple of my favorites on this album, and I'd love for you to talk about them a little bit. Yeah. There's uh, there's two that really stuck out to me as I call them holy bleep songs because they're songs yeah. that as I'm listening to them, I stop immediately and start it over. Like that's how you know it's a yeah. really great song. Uh, and there's one that's called uh, the one you need. Yeah. both lyrically and musically man it's just really good talk to me about this tune yeah that song uh that's song. i actually started writing that song in berlin um backstage in berlin and you know I, I, a lot of my family's from germany uh apparently uh and uh, so i was and uh, so i was like i was really in my element but no really i was just backstage and i was in this really cool place playing my music for like a, a arena of people and like i was just thought it was crazy that I was able to reach my music that far. And, and I started getting that feeling, but I also started getting that feeling of like, oh, it'd be nice to share this journey with somebody. You know, I've been doing this for a while. I kind of know what it is. Um, but, you know, I don't think I ever give myself enough credit for being able to be that foundation, that rock for somebody to lean on and lean into. And, uh, and so, you know, the, the idea of, you know, let me be the one you need. Let me be that person that you could, that you could go to and that you can run to and, um, I think that was a really powerful thing to give to myself to, to, to notice that some self-compassion on that front. And, and, uh, that's kind of where that song came about. And I came home and, and, uh, got with a couple friends and, and, uh, finished that song. And, and it just ended up being one of my favorite songs I've written. Are you, do you think that you're, you're, I don't want to say revealing a different part of yourself because obviously you've always been this person, but, yeah. but a lot of people for a lot of time looked at you as like the fun goofy like yeah. brett eldridge and and what's funny about that is like your first big hit was raymond which is a very yeah. serious song so exactly so it kind of you know kind of counter uh acts that but but would you agree with that that you're kind of i don't know not showing a different side but maybe you're showing the real you now yeah, absolutely ever. absolutely yeah it's not like i was a uh uh a fraud or anything back then but what i was was uh, I knew it really worked for me. And then vulnerability was something I was just scared of. So like, I wanted people to see I was always happy and excited. Yeah. And I wanted to lift people up and make them really ex excited. And I don't want any negativity in my life and, or anything. Um, I couldn't confront any of that kind of stuff. I was just trying to seem, make it feel like everything was perfect. And I had a lot of amazing moments. I don't regret any of it. Um, but uh, I think once, you know, I have a very serious or not even I guess serious, but the sentimental side to me that, um, like you said, you know, Raymond, before the world of, of the business side came in, I was, that's my first song. And usually your first song, you can kind of see that of just kind of an unfiltered person. And that, you know, that's the, that's a big part of who I am is that, that sentimental side. So, uh, you know, I wanted to get back to that. I wanted, I had to get in touch with that person, you know, and I, I am that, you know, goofball that likes to have fun and, and all that stuff, but that's an exaggerated form of, you can't you can't keep that up all the time and always be super happy go lucky and all that stuff and so it wasn't like I was always faking it but 
you know, I was trying to put on a, uh, put on a mask of feeling great all the time. And, and I, and I, I, uh, I don't want to go around and be, you know, uh, Eeyore and, and dragging around all the time and just being negative. I just want to be real. And I just want to be honest and I just want to live and I want to feel those things. And I want other people to know I feel those things and that they can feel those things and, and uh, they can feel the ups and they can feel the, just the downs just as much and be okay. The fact that they're able to feel them and they're here for the ride and, and uh, they can ride it out. So I think, uh, yeah, I guess it was introducing a, a much deeper side that some people might've known was a little bit there, but never even close to what they know now. And now it's just branching my song right off. I mean, I just got done writing a song just now before I came up here and, and it's just, this record has allowed me to go so many more places now. And, and uh, I, I feel like I'm, you know, just begun on a, a, a really big place that I've been reaching for for a long time. I love it, man. I think that music's the best when it's authentic and coming from an authentic person. So I appreciate it. I want to talk Thank about you. the other song that for me stuck out. And, and personally, for me, this was my absolute favorite. I've listened to it four or five times over again already. It's called Then You Do. It's interesting when a song can literally make you feel something and then and then you it's almost like a movie right because you feel it and then there's like these these scenes that flash in front of your eyes at least for me and as I'm listening to this I'm like back in the bars in North Carolina and you know you're you're dressing up a certain way and you talk to a girl and then like through the whole thing it, it really is incredible that that something you wrote can do that to someone yeah. walk me through that song man yeah, it's, you know, that song is, takes me back to those places too. And I'm still in them in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, for me, it's, I mean, I've been to a bar in a long time, but uh, like for me, it's, um, it's a message of life of like, you know, getting back on the horse kind of, kind of deal when you, when you've, when you've been thrown down and uh, you know, life has beat you down. You can either throw in the towel and just, and just stay in that comfort zone of feeling like everything's closing around you forever. And it's, trust me, I've been there. Or you could get back, you could be, get back in the race, step up and say, I'm here for life. I'm gonna get back in there. And you start, you know, you start going on dates again, or you start, you know, if your heart's broken, you start going on dates, you go on one date, or you, you know, if you're afraid of driving, cause you, you know, you, you had a, a wreck or something and, and you're afraid of driving, you, 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 you drive a little bit, you just drive around the block. And then, you know what, the next day you drive, you drive around the neighborhood and the next day you drive downtown and the next day you're on a road trip. You know what I mean? Or yeah. it's the kind of thing of like getting back, getting back into life, going outside the comfort zones, uh, getting, getting back in it when you've been knocked down and you think you won't, you won't, you think you won't get back in it, but then you do. And, uh, and that's life. And I think just to be able to show up and do that, I think that's what this song says. It's a phenomenal tune, Dan. Dude, the, the whole album, Sunday Drive, really, really good. If you haven't got it, make sure you got it, stream it, buy it, all that good stuff. Uh, we're going to play Good Day in a second. Brett, it's so good to talk to you, man. And uh, hopefully sometime real soon, we'll be able to see a live show and interact. Yes. With you, man. <laughs> man, I'm, I am uh, I am so ready. I, I, uh, I have, I'm chomping at the bit, as you can imagine, just like yeah. everybody else. So as soon as they say it's go time, I'm ready. I'm just sitting, I got guitars all around me. I'd like to put them on a, <laughs> on a bus and send them out there, so. Can't wait, man. Brett, thanks, thanks so much for the time, man. Appreciate it, brother. Take care. All right. You too.